Let's have a nice cup of tiari in the afternoon with Hannah Murray. Joining us on the line now is Ronnie Buckingham. He's a spiritual medium whose second book is out now, Medium Rare to Well Done. Ronnie was born on the wrong side of the tracks until the spirit world led him eventually to the right path. In this book, he sets out to prove once and for all that there is life after death. Welcome to the show, Ronnie. Oh, hi. Right. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me on. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thanks so much for joining us. So tell me a little bit about your background and how, when and why you discovered that you had this gift. Well, I'd, uh, I was born in the East End of London in Hackney. Um, my father was a compulsive gambler. I uh, used to get paid on a Friday night and go straight to the dog track and things were really, really tight. So it was a case of wearing second-hand clothes and uh, other people's left off sort of thing, as most of the East End did, but we seemed to have it worse than most. And uh, it was a sort of miserable childhood. We moved from Hackney to Leightonstone, uh, which seemed a bit better. My father suffered from TB, so he had to leave his job in the print. He bought a pub in the sticks. Um, I didn't have a great relationship with my mum, to be honest with you. She was very hard on me for reasons that I could go on and on about. And uh, anyway, so um, I started working on building sites and things. Some I've had housekeeping, nothing left, and I, I drifted into crime. Someone said to me, do you want to earn a few quid doing what? And uh, a bit of driving, and got paid more for that bit of driving than I've earned in a month. And um, yeah, I progressed to other things. And um, sadly, that led to Borstal, and uh, then I got an 18 month. Uh, two year and a four year and <laughs> for conspiracy and uh, yeah I was working in gyms and I was a bouncer in the doors for years and um, then just around at the age of 40 uh, my life sort of very much changed in a bad way with a relationship I was in and someone I was going to marry and all this stuff and my father passed away and it all came uh, uh, to a point really and I just happened to so someone said, go and have a reading. And I said, why? And I said, well, you know, they might shine a light on what you're going to do because, you know, at 40 years of age, you're a bit old for doing the doors, and I never had any other skills. And um, so I went for this reading with this uh, lovely lady, and um, the minute she met me, she said, do you realize that you're a natural-born medium? And I said, oh, no, yes. I thought to myself, all I need is some sort of crank now, you know. <laughs> And um, so she said, no, you don't believe me, right? She gave me a ring to hold that said, Mum. And she said, um, I'm going to make you a cup of tea, and I guarantee you there are thoughts come to you that aren't your thoughts and visions that you don't understand. And I thought, oh, God, you know, what's all this about? I've come here for help, and she's nutting me off, really. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, the truth was, she made me this cup of tea, and um, I, I see this ring being thrown into a fire, and the words, it's blackened, come to me. And at the time, I understand it now, but at that time, I just knew this ring was never meant for her. So when she came back in, um, she asked me if I picked anything up. And I said, well, it's all sort of nonsense. She said, well, I'll tell you if it's nonsense. And when I told her what I'd seen about the ring being black and that it wasn't hers, she sat down and she said, are you taking the pee out of me? I said, what? She said, how could you know that? I said, well, I don't know, but that's what I've came. And anyway, so she said, what are you doing on a... Monday night, and I said, nothing. At that time, I'd lost my job for a fight on the doors with someone, being in a bad place, and um, I was didn't have a girlfriend, anything like that, so time was my own, so I said, okay. And I popped along to this Monday night to this first circle meeting, and I went into meditation, and when I came out, I could read people. Wow. And, um, yeah, and within... I think within nine months, I was the first medium to work the open of Colston College in Norfolk and worked in front of a thousand people and got rave reviews. I was just off working in um, Switzerland, Gibraltar, Spain uh, for Spectrum Radio. I did some, uh, some hotel work there. Uh, I was over there for a week or two. And then Spectrum Radio asked me to go on and do some readings over the telephone sort of yeah. thing, which I did uh, with another lady who was a tarot reader called Jill. I think she went under the name of Gabriel. Uh, yeah, and then Denmark live TV and a lot of um, TV in this country. Oh, he's disappeared. Oh. oh, you're there, you're there. You disappeared. I was like, oh, he's back. Are you with us? I'm with you. Yeah, okay, sorry good. about that. Okay. No, no, carry thing. on. Carry on. <laughs> yeah, so um, yeah, well, I was a big, big success in Gibraltar. I was there maybe four or five times a year for a week uh, doing shows and readings. I say 
Spain. I did live TV in Denmark for a week with Class on TV. I, I was on Mystic Challenge. I basically won Mystic Challenge. I think I, uh, 15 episodes, I won 12, drew one, lost two. Um, what's, what's that? How does that work? Well, Mystic Challenge was a lovely program on Sky, and it was by Jonathan Ross for hosted it but originally Yuri Geller was on there and I, I was just wanting to meet Yuri Geller so um, I see the advert in the psychic news that they wanted people to sit in a jury so I rang up to be a juror and uh, the lady that answered said look you know are you interested in this I said well I'm a I'm a working medium now I'm probably about two or three years into my career at that time so she said are you interested in having a go you know being a contestant I said well not really I just don't have time to come to London for an interview she said well could you read someone over the phone I said well I suppose so and so she said right I'm going to pass you the phone over to someone they can't talk to you just say what you're picking up and blah 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 so she said right I'm passing the phone over I took a minute to tune in and off it went and it turned out it was Nikki Cooper who was the director and uh, she was blown away by it all so she said right are you doing anything Saturday? I said, no, she said, you're on. <laughs> so I got a straight pass then. I, I did 15 episodes of that. Then I was on Inside Out, Scream Team. Um, yeah, uh, I, I was the psychic advisor of Big Brother when it first came out. Yeah. I predicted that Kate Lord would win it, but um, Jade Goody was the, the big name. And then I sort of stopped doing telly because... I was offered my own show that they wanted to make it scary, you know, torches under the face and all that, and I won't do that to my gift, you know. So I, I sort of now specialise in bereavement. That's why I'm about not a fortune teller. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I've never looked back. So it's my second book, so it's just come out. I've read countless people, still doing some shows, still doing a few readings, and um, but it's all about bereavement, really, and, and bringing that closure to people that their loved ones are never far away. Yeah, it must be wonderful to be able to do that, you know, giving giving them that that comfort or, or closure, as you say. Yeah, it's a lovely feeling. I mean, um, I, I, I believe I've stayed very humble with it. I know a lot of mediums out there think there's something clever, but if you took mediumship away, there's not a lot more I can do, really. I'm not good at carpentry or laying bricks or anything like that. It's the only skill I've got. And, um, yeah, so I, I use it to the best of my ability. And um, in the book, you know, the, the stories in medium, because we've called the first one medium rare because there's not mediums out there that have done spells in prison, you know, and bottles, <laughs> obviously. And um, it was quite funny for me because I found it very, very difficult to understand why I was given the gift. And uh, I read a lovely old man who was a, a wonderful healer called Al Albert Lamb. And he lived to his about 94. I read him when he was about 90, and um, his wife came through, and the reading went very well. And he said to me, I had loads and loads of readings. He said, but you've got a wonderful, wonderful gift. He said, I'm so impressed with you. He said, but there's something inside you, son. He said, and it's eating you away. And why, what is it? What's the matter with you? And I said, well, Albert, I've been in prison. I've been in violent situations. I've hurt a few people. I've done some bad things. And yet, all of a sudden, I've got this gift. So he said, um, what do you know about the governor, boy? And I said, the governor? He said, come on, Jesus, the governor. I said, well, I know he's a great man. He said, well, he was the greatest man to ever walk the earth. He said, have you heard of his disciples? I said, yeah, of course. I think there was 12 of them. He said, that's it, boy. He said, where do you think he'd gone from? I said, well, I don't know. He said, well, none from a church. He said, they come from dockyards, bars, whorehouses. He said, they was all hard swearing, hard living, tough men. He said, that's what he wanted, people he could mould. He said, and that's what he's got in you. He says, you'll stand up on that stage or platform and you'll give it walls and all. And that's exactly how I work, you know, with humour. But I am very, very Joe Blunt with it because... Yeah. You need to be accurate, you know, you can't surmise or... I don't like saying anything where everyone in the room could go, well, I could take that. Do you see what I mean? Oh, definitely. And and that's why a lot of people are, are often so sceptical about psychics and mediums, because they're used to saying that, uh, seeing that kind of thing when people say, oh, I've got like the letter A coming through or... Yeah, you that's know, nonsense. And, I mean, yeah. or they'll pick on an elderly woman and say, well, I've got your mother here. So yeah, chances are, you talking to a lady in the 60s or 70s, she's lost her mother, you know. So, yeah. Or average has said that. And they'll say, oh, you've got her ring, haven't you? And they say, but they won't, they can't describe it. Mm. You understand? They won't say, well, it's a wedding band or it's a wide band or it's white gold or it's gold or it's got a diamond in it or it's got how many diamonds. They're very vague with it all. And um, uh, <clears throat> one of my favourites is, um, I, I, I feel a bit short of breath just before I die, you know. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lynn that taught me and 
nurse said to me, and I was only in circle for five months before she said, no, you're so good now, get out, and you've got your wings, which uh, most people sit in circle, I believe, for about five years. Um, she used to take me around to the spiritualist churches, and I'm, I mean, there's some, I love, and there's some mediums out there, you know, Keith Charles, Bill Rich, uh, Agel Marissa, excellent mediums, quality mediums, Gordon Smith, fantastic medium, isn't it? Mm. But there's so many charlatans, and not even charlatans, they believe they've got a gift, but they talk in everyday talk that anyone could take, and I'd go and she'd say, right, don't go down that route, don't say that everyone in this room could take that. She was very, very hardly, and I mean, she was a, at the time she was going to kick me out of circle, and if you dared slip a guess in, you know, she'd go berserk. You realise you're messing with someone's feelings, this is a, oh my God, so, uh, <laughs> yeah. have I ever done a bad reading? I don't think I've ever done a bad reading, I've done readings that aren't so good, but from the feedback I get in the years I've been going, yeah, I've had some wonderful uh, accolades. I've had a star named after me. I'm godfather to a couple who lost their son. I'm godfather to the new son, or Callan Russell. So I've been very, very lucky and very gifted, and I've met some wonderful people along the way. So I don't and regret how, many of it. How do you explain it, Ronnie? Because there will be people listening still that are going, oh, come on, come on, you know. Of course. And I, I, I love sceptics. I really do. <laughs> and whenever I do shows, I ask the sceptics, and I can always target them. And I've changed a lot of minds. I mean, in the book, in the write-ups there, there are people that actually said, I went there saying, oh, my God, what's all this about? And uh, one particular story in the book, can I say about this? Yeah, please do, absolutely. Well, um, I, I've been working at a restaurant called Mark and Arto's in Hodderson for a lot of years. He has me there every month, nice man. People have a, a free course meal, then I come on and do about an hour and a half. So um, I'm a big ex-bodybuilder. I'm about six foot one, 17 stone, bald, big, um, they tell me I'm aggressive looking. I don't know, but they say I am. <laughs> so um, I won't swear, but I'll give you an idea. I don't want to swear on radio. But anyway, this chap called Billy Morgan, who's a professional boxer, and his friend Billy Mayer, I think his name is, he owns a scaffolding company. Their wives have dragged them along to this night to see this so-called medium. Yeah. So um, I, it, was, it was sold out, so I was a little bit late starting. So I'm st at the bottom of the stairs talking to Adam, the owner, and these two lads are coming down the stairs. And what they said to each other was, uh, I bet he's having a moan about this bloody medium that hasn't turned up yet. <laughs> so they've gone to the toilet. And I, I've just got, I've got an understanding of people I have. And uh, as they come back out, I said, all right, you two, don't you give me any bloody trouble tonight, you two. So one said to the other one, and this story's in the book, he can't be the medium the size of him, this big old baldy bloke, you know, what's he doing? <laughs> um, so Billy the Scaffolder said to his boxer mate, as he went upstairs, I'll murder him tonight, you wait, I'll slaughter him. So they've got that intention. Yeah. So in the book he said, oh, the fella come on, had a bit of a chat, swore a little bit, made a few people laugh, give a couple of messages that sounded okay. He said, the next thing, he gets my Billy's dad through, the boxer's dad through. And in the book he said, he would have had to know his dad for years to know the things he knew. He said, Billy's sitting there, now he's sobbing, this boxer, he's, oh. he's crying, he can't believe what he's coming out with. And he's got his arm, he says, it's all right, Bill, it's all right, Bill. Oh, he's a bit warm with this fellow sort of thing. All of a sudden, his granddad came through, <laughs> who was a coal merchant. And I said he went skinned because he was so kind, he gave most of the coal away to people that are hard up. Oh. I said, and the lady standing next to him is his wife, and she's serving fruit and veg. Well, she's wife, his mum, his then who brought him up, they brought him up. She had a fruit and vegetable. So now he's sobbing. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, they've come downstairs at the end of the night. Bill said, being old school, he said, look, we were wrong about the man. He absolutely blew us away. <laughs> and he come down, he said, as I've shook his hand, he said, oh, by the way, Granddad loves, loves the fact you've got his watch in your pocket. And he pulled out his granddad's pocket watch with his photo in it. And he said, even my oh. wife didn't know I brought that there tonight. Oh, so wow. Well. He put in the book, now I believe there's a life after death, and if you want someone who can talk to your loved ones, it's a big baldy lump from acne. <laughs> 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 so that sort of thing. But yeah, getting back to this, some of the arguments I make, millions and millions of people, especially in the nursing profession and, and things like that, have claimed to see ghosts. Now, they can't all be wrong. Yeah. It can't all be wrong. You can't millions and millions of people that were drunk, making it up, or seeing, and if only one of those millions of people are right, then um, there's a life after death because that's all the spirit is or a ghost is, is a spirit. Yeah. And what I, point to, what I point out to people, they always come through with their with their personality and basically I'm a clairsentient so I feel spirit. So if someone was a nasty bit of work in life, I'd know it. If they were violent, that's what, if they were depressed, jack the lad, very withdrawn, 
I can feel their personality and you can feel, they give you a feeling of where the problems was in the heart, the head, wherever it may be. And then there's clairvoyance and I, I did a reading a little while ago for a couple to give you an idea what this clairvoyance thing is. And I, I, I picked up straight where they'd lost a son. I felt he was Down syndrome, which he was, and I felt he never came out of hospital and died around three or four months old, which was also correct. So all the time I'm talking to this couple, this little this little boy is he's putting images of starfish into my mind. So I said, what is the significance of starfish, please? Don't know. I said, it's got to mean something. It can't be to do with the beach because he never left hospital. But starfish, he goes, anyway, it, he came up about four or five times through the reading and they couldn't have accepted. They just couldn't accept it. So I said, okay. I got a text from the lady two days later and said, oh, Ronnie, oh, my God, he lived and died in starfish ward. Oh, wow. I just couldn't work out what the starfish meant. But, yeah. Um, so it, it, it's like that, you know. Um, yeah, and of course, you, you, it's very hard to hear spirit. I just hear odd names or places. You, you can't know medium peers in a conversation like you can hear me or I can hear you. It's not like that. Yeah. A lot of it's done through um, feelings, through visions, and odd words. You, you just, it, it comes together. It's hard to explain. But um, and do you have uh, yeah, to my argument is I've been going for 30 years. I've had a two-year waiting list for private readings. Most of the shows I do are very, very busy. And I've converted loads of people, men as well as women. And all the stories in in both books, they can be backed up, absolutely backed up by the yeah. people. They weren't paid money or anything like that. They're just genuine, honest people that have lost loved ones and um, told their story. And I, I made a point of saying to them, please don't exaggerate it. Please don't make me sound better than I am. You know, if I made mistakes, please put it on there. What bits I got wrong, and so it, so it went. And, um, mm. yeah. Uh, and do you have to kind of turn it on and off so to speak I mean when you're just talking to someone have you constantly got spirit coming through or do you have to kind no, of no okay. when I first started I, I, I was I just wanted to get rid of messages yeah. uh, to find out they wore you out you know so now when it's um, now and again they get through the barriers um, well, I lived in France for a few years and I came back um, and my wife said would you go into Freeport in Blaine near us and get some fragrance oils she loves the Bursley fragrance oils so when I went in as the lady was serving me I felt the presence of her son there mm. and I told her this and she said oh have you read this in the newspaper so it was obviously recent I said no I've literally just come from Dover uh, to here um, get the oils because I know I'll forget them at the end of the week Anyway, I said, he keeps saying it's James, which is his name, and I knew it was something to do with the lorry. Anyway, she got quite nasty, and she said, look, um, I'm sorry, but I don't believe this, and this is all been in the newspapers. Mm -hmm. And uh, I sort of mentally said to her son, I can't do nothing here. Now, I can't explain how this was said to me, but I knew instantly what to say, and I said, look, I'll, I'll, I'll take the oils. I don't want to upset you. That's not my intention at all. I swear I've never read it. I've just literally got it from France. But he just laughed and said, if I tell you that you haven't got to pay for his teeth now, you'll understand it's him. And her whole demeanor changed. And she came around and cuddled me and sobbing. And I said, what did that mean? Because I don't know. And he was due to get married and he played rugby and he got his two front teeth knocked out. So his mum said, you can't grab the aisle like that. And he said, well, I'm not wearing one of those plates. So the mum said, right, we'll, we'll have new screwing teeth on it, which is probably a couple of grand on it, something like that, I should yeah, imagine. Yeah. And of course, he was... Bless his heart, he was, uh, he was killed in this accident before the, the teeth were ever done. So mm. nothing like that. would. It was so random and so unlikely that she knew that it was him, you know. And then about nine months, ten months later, this young girl came for a reading. And I recognized the energy. I can't always do it, but I said, look, I don't know how and I don't know when, but I've met your brother before. And she said, oh, you went into Freeport and you changed my mother's life. Oh. So it's little things like that, you know, but I understand sceptics and there's a lot of, I'm not mentioning any names, but very famous mediums out there that, um, oh, they just ham it up so much, you know, talking in baby voices and making silly comments and uh, they make us all look theatrical and silly, really. Yeah, I mean, that's the heartbreaking thing, isn't it? Especially when you're dealing with people who's who have lost loved ones and are absolutely desperate for some kind of connection to them and, you know, will pay the ends of the earth in order to feel like they're connected to their loved ones and then not get a good experience, not get a connection and, and think, oh, well, oh, you know, that's terrible. a waste of money. It's awful. Well, um, yeah, it's um, certain people you just don't charge. You just don't. 
take that. And the most harrowing, can I talk about the most harrowing reading that I've recently had? Yeah, please. That absolutely turned me inside out. Um, I had a lady, I think her name was Tanya, that had seen me before and she was booked in. And she turned up on the door with another lady and she said, Ronnie, I'm so sorry, but really this reading's for this lady. And could you read? I said, yeah, reading's a reading. If that's what you want, I'll read this lady. And uh, why do I sit opposite people and I hold their hand and I just test the link. And immediately I, I, I see this... Um, lady's daughter coming through and uh, to be honest uh, first of all I see a lot of blood I thought she had cut her own wrist it was a suicide and it was very tragic I knew her mum didn't get to say goodbye and I knew she was the only daughter and she said no that's not quite right so I said okay I said she's telling me she's got two children a boy and a girl I said there's another little girl standing with her children and then the penny I said they're all on, they're on the other side of life with her and there's a little girl with Chinese eyes but slanted eyes but she's not Chinese and that got her attention. Anyway, I, I turned out, I said, this to do with an Irishman that the daughter was living with, not their father. I couldn't get his name, but I said he was the devil. And his name was Damien. And, uh, oh, you know, it broke my heart. He, I kept seeing this hammer. And basically, oh, he tied up the mum. <gasps> and he murdered them all with a hammer. He, he, he raped the daughter, which oh I didn't get. I'm gonna be, I didn't get that. I didn't pick that up. But I, I, I knew that he had murdered them all with a hammer. And I knew that, that the little girl with the slanted eyes was staying the night. I knew she'd stay there Friday night and had such a good time. She rang her mum and said, please, mum, one more night, one more night. And uh, this uh, evil, I'm not going to use the word on radio, but this evil, so and so, uh, he murdered all of them with a hammer. Smashed them all to bits. The mum, doing the mum last so that she witnessed the, oh the murder of the kids. And um, I got them out of the house and I broke down. I phoned my wife up. I could not talk. I've never cried so much in all my life. It absolutely shattered me. You know, the nice thing was, she was a lady from the north of England and evidently about a year later, they, they demolished the house or sometimes they demolished the house because no one would go into it where it happened. Mm. And I didn't pick this up, but evidently um, the bloke that did it uh, the name was Damien, and I said he was like the devil. He phoned the police, and when the, he stood at the gate, and when the police arrived, he said, oh, it looks like I'm going back to prison. And they said, why? He said, I've just murdered, uh, I've just murdered four people in there, or three, four people, whatever it was. And, um, yeah, and uh, the police went in and violently sick and come out and carted him off. But I got a lovely message from Tanya, and she said, oh, thank you so much. She was so pleased with the reading. It's, it's gave us something to, it's given us something to cling on to, that there is this life after death and she will see him again at some stage. But that's yeah. when it's really, really difficult, you know. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. And you've got to be able to, you know, kind of let that go and, and go back to your, your own life. And you know what I mean? Uh, it's, it's well, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm 70, I'm 70 now and I still use the gym every day. I've trained all my life and I do that. You need, I've got a, a wonderful wife, a beautiful wife. She stands by me and we have a good social life. You know, we go out and we eat, we have holidays and especially now as I'm older and um yeah so you've got to have a way of unwinding i'm, I'm not yeah. really a drinker or nothing like that but the gym keeping fit and telling jokes and laughing really that's <laughs> that's my coping mechanism because it is painful you know this i've had especially when it's kids and it's yeah. you're unsup and, and it, it it breaks your heart really but the nice thing is for me i know that they live on and if you can give wonderful proof i mean I'm not saying that people buy them, but I earn pennies from those books, so I'm not worried about them. But if you buy them, you can contact the people. They're all named in there, and you can contact them and have their own story. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm very proud of what I can do, and I'm humbled by it at the same time. So, um, yeah, oh, it's I'm great. very true to it. I try to be very true to it. It's and uh, it's there's some dedicated mediums out there, but I can understand people's scepticism. It sounds too good to be true. Hmm. But what would be the point of life if we just pass and there's nothing? Oh, I know. It's 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 a weird. And I point out to people, we're all very much the same. I mean, you might have someone's lost arms and legs, but we've all got one head. We we may all look the same and physically be the same, but we're all totally different. And that is what your spirit is. It's your personality. Yeah. It's what your likes, your dislikes, the way you love, the way you dislike, the way you are in life, the way you treat people, the way you like to be treated. All that is your spirit, mm. and it's encased by the body. And through that body, through human existence, your spirit learns. It's like this is your schooling. This is where you're going to learn. There's no pain on that side of life. No. There's nothing to learn, really, on that. You don't think to talk about case records and what you can see and what you can learn over there. But this place is where you'll suffer all the pain and some great joy, of course. But this is your learning curve down here.
Yeah. And then when you when you pass, you pass on. And um, I'm a great believer in reincarnation that we come back down and live many lives until we get it right. Yeah. Um, that's my own belief. I can't prove that, but. Um, well, I think, I think people have to read the book. We're going to have to leave it there because we're coming up to the news, unfortunately, at the top of the hour. If people want to get a copy of the book, it's called Medium Rare to Well Done. It's a great title. It's available on our website, tre.radio, and it's by Ronnie Buckingham, who we've had the pleasure of chatting with today. Ronnie, thank you so much for joining sure. us. Bless all, God bless all your listeners and you, and uh, thank you very much for having me on. Thanks so much, Ronnie. You take and care. Bye-bye.